Guru, do you know I leave tomorrow? Yes. yes and uh, right here. when I'm when I'm home, yes. my connection to the Sangha is is uh, via the internet. Yeah. And uh, I have this love for the internet for what it has brought me because it brought me to your feet. You know? And uh, being online has allowed me to um, be with you and to discover you and it's precious and um, for that I'm very grateful. But the thing with the internet is um, if you spend a lot of time online, like I do, because I'm watching satsang all the time, um, you come across both aspects. All of this great uh, wealth of knowledge we have now available to us where we can just at the touch of a few buttons, we can be in satsang with a great master like you. And then there's the, the negative side of the internet where there's a lot of trolling and negativity and people experience this a lot when they're online a lot. And um, because I'm gonna spend a lot of time online now, mm. being with you and yes. you know, I'd like some advice about how to meet these things and, yeah. and you know, this, the stuff that we see online all the time. Sure. And I'm sorry if it's a bit of a worldly question. And, you know. No, no, I feel it's, it's, it's important for me, you know, because many of these terms I'm just hearing also like troll trolling and, you know, I'm not so much, my use of internet is very, very basic, you know, so I, you know. I don't it's really. It's trolling and it's bullying, and sometimes it's creating fearful thoughts in people, or yes. doubtful things. It's it's there's a broad range of stuff that we face when we're online. Yes, so. yes. Clearly, you know, and um, I mean, the different ways we look at these things also, because in one way. Um, <clears throat> There is a perspective that functions in me to look at all things as a play of consciousness, you know, and that consciousness, by the very nature that it expresses as life and language and the functioning of perception and the sense of self and the sense of God, the sense of right and wrong and good and evil, life and death and all of this, is uh, is produced through consciousness. You see that. In, in fairness, it, it is going to have these interrelated opposites, you know. That play will be there, but that within the play, mm, mm, varying beings will come to a certain level of maturity and will naturally wish to, to expand inside that, uh, their, their understanding and so on. No? And, and uh, there will be forces, uh, as we have seen, and, uh, and that we know from long ago, these forces play that. And it, irrespective of who you are, in fact, you know, that there will be um, voices that uh, are not only disagreeing, disagreeing is one thing, having different opinions is something fine, no? but seem like they deliberately set out to create, you know, this um, uh, controversy. Mm, scandal, attacks on beings, and so on, and sometimes really, really unfair and untruthfully. So we may ask, well, why would this happen? Why would, you know, God, consciousness, allow these things to happen? You see, mm -hmm. and one really search within to find. I mean, there must be, of course, reasons also, because I find that our daily life, the troubles that come, they also help us to grow. And even when someone, you know, even from the story of the Bible, when one time, when Jesus spoke about people who actually was doing similar things to him, you know, and he said, uh, you know, they hate me without reason, that is, you know, and that, uh, but I don't think he was so surprised at that. I think uh, I feel that all beings, not just, you know, you know, um, spiritually. Um, conscious beings, but people who just seem to be more visible than others and get a certain amount of attention, it seems like it comes. And with the with really the the, the this modern 
um, you know, phenomenon of internet activity, which in, it seems to have so much wonderful things about it, you know, we start to see also some things that uh, people are expressing sometimes out of their pain also. And uh, some people are really intimidated even by love, you know, to see like the expression of genuine love, it brings up many things for them. And uh, I feel uh, what we are seeing sometimes too, are, you know, we cannot pin it down to just one intention. But it can be also that, you know, some, some, some beings are carrying so much misunderstanding inside, uh, so much hatefulness or grudge or, you know, um, stale energies or so on, you know, and they have to vent that. And, you know, some voice may say that at least they're venting it mostly, you know, it's just wind and words and so on, you know. But they, those who taste that fire, you know, they know, you know, it's very hurtful when people um, say may attack someone that we love or, or, or respect with things that, you know, nobody has proof whether they are true or not. And so there's another window that they can come through. But it will happen. <clears throat> I see it as a, of course, within, because I cannot disagree that it is a movement in consciousness. I cannot say only what is agreeable to me are expressions of consciousness, you know. I feel the full expression is there. And uh, we all have to work out our lives, you know. If you believe in karma or whatever it is, we have to work through our own sort of processes and uh, understanding and you know, development and sensitivity to, to, towards goodness. We have to be attracted to and feel good about caring for other beings. And, and some people, it's, it hasn't reached people yet. It's probably at the level of trees and, and rocks and landscape. And the more they move towards more sentient forms, you know, they start to have trouble. You know? When it reaches the human beings, it's that biggest trouble. But it's just a lot to do with our conditioning also. And beings come at various stages within their spiritual development and maturity. And they express variously. So many will be, we feel that people we say are spiritual people, are those who have a natural aspiration towards you know, discovering God or discovering truth, growing in the truth within themselves experientially and so on like that. But that is, uh, that's not the only kind of people that are there. There are people who call and consider themselves spiritual also, but have a certain kind of motives that, that would be surprising to other beings, you know, that they, they would want to see, uh, they will not work towards, uh, say, harmony of human beings, but divisions were for devoted to, to, to dividing and, and creating havoc and, and causing people to hate each other and to, to fight it out amongst themselves. Um, without themselves, the ones who are, who are the main perpetrators of these kind of conflicts seeming to be involved in it at all. So there's all kinds of things there, you know, and what to do. As a sadhana, do we, because I sometimes feel like I can get drawn into the discussion. What the question is also sometimes about um, whether you, how to meet it. You know, whether you respond, whether you just stay high. It's it's difficult because my you know my natural thing is just to respond to, mm -hmm. to things. If somebody, you know, if I feel joy, then my response come towards that joy. If you feel love, a response comes towards love. You feel sort of a hatred or you know in these kind of energies. Also, something responds to that. It may not respond to it, but like like for like in in some cases. But the 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 intention. It's seeming intention of some beings, you know. It communicates and really, you know, it can sting. And, uh, it's, you know, especially when you know um, and feel that it is trying to distract uh, the minds of uh, people who are exploring. Mm. But these beings, they will, they will have to learn in time. You know, we each get a taste of our own medicine sometimes. And it's funny how it is that sometimes it seems that people attacking in, in someone else the things that is really strong in themselves also. You know? But somewhere in life, you know, it gets, you know, thankfully, that is not just some other person detects something and then deliberately challenge something. It comes from all different ways in life. Things get addressed, you know. And in, sometimes we see, but, you know, it seems unfair because it never gets addressed, you know, with the same spoon. Sometimes it comes in a different way. And, 
seemingly unrelated, but I feel that we are compelled beyond our human nature to evolve, you know. And it may be slow, it might be painful, and the more it seems as though we are deeply invested in personhood or personality, the slower our journey into what I would call real freedom is, you know. And of course, people say things that we experience and to be very unpleasant and, you know, hurtful and shameful, you know, disrespectful and so on. Um, I don't know if anybody ever really gets used to it, but I remember uh, I was brought up in a very uh, loving way with, with my father, and then a little bit different with other relatives, you know, growing up. But the first time I really tasted, you know, that someone really didn't like you, want to fight you, or something like that, was at school, you know, and it was really devastating to find someone who really don't want like you and even wants to beat you up. Even the guy even said, you know, at lunchtime, Tony Muya, I'm going to beat you up, and he had muscles like lemons in his arm. And, so. and you know, I had the strength, but not the courage to fight. I was never attracted to that, you know. But these things come to us, and sometimes you have to walk the walk. Sometimes you find that you're out of moves. You cannot just escape. An apology won't work. You know, a love letter, please forgive me, it doesn't work. They're just after your head, and you have to stand up and fight. You know, I when I say fight, I don't know in whatever way you do what you you can. You know, so sometimes when people, for even in my own sake, sometimes people write uh, very unkind things, very untruthful things. And uh, I, I, I feel, I also feel it for them. Because I feel that you bring a lot of bad things on yourself. You know, <coughs> people who, who plan these things even, you know, knowing in their heart it's not true. But maybe not respecting their own heart also. Mm, I, my feeling naturally, you know, is to, is to, um, Respond to these things and to as honestly, and keep out of the fire of person personal, you know, sort of um, feelings, but to really be as corrective as you can about things, because if somebody is listening, we have a tendency. Some people have a tendency to listen to bad news. It catches their attention. I think some people believe that we, by culture, we are oriented towards listening to negative things. We we, we seem to excite something in us, you know. So I don't know if there's any newspaper or any things promoting good news. I don't know if there's such a thing. But it's clear that um, you know, sometimes good news for people can provoke jealousies and you know anger and frustrations in, in some beings. It doesn't always mean that someone is always going to be congratulatory or happy for you. you know? Even could be members of your family. You know? It happens. Even in relationships like even, you know, intimate romantic relationships, so one part of the cup is jealous of the other one. And, you know, so these things are not, they're not new. They're old, Pretty ancient. You said things. that we must stay out of personhood um, when these things happen. I feel like I get drawn into personhood if, yeah. if someone I love is, is being attacked. Yes, but you know? it's a natural feeling really to be feel pulled like in I and to, to yes. I want to come in and say, yes. Hey. I always say, you know, you know, up to a point, you know, you must address. I feel to not say and to, uh, you sort of and do to, you just, you know, you're just taken on the chin you and just, just taken on the chin, or do you come in and say, no? I, I'm never immediately dismissive of what people say. You know, I, I learned to give some space to listen to what they're saying, and sometimes it's been so helpful for me, not on the level that they intended, by the way, but you know, something make use of it or use it as some kind of mirror to search, you know. Because it's very difficult sometimes to really look into yourself on just pleasant feelings. We just want to just enjoy those. But when things rock your boat, then you're more inclined to look more deeply and like, wow, something is on fire. And you, you, you look and say, wow, you know. And you see that part of the mind that, that really wants to do something immediately and something that, that hurts as much, if not more, to the ones who seem to be causing that, you know. Um, it's, it feels a very normal. I don't know if everyone has used the word natural reaction, but I think it's a kind of normal reaction for many people when they feel um, attacked or something, to, to want to hit back and to hurt also, you know. Mm. 
And I cannot say, you know, anything as any absolute. Because sometimes you have to, you know, put one back on the nose or something. You know, I can't say exactly when and what. You know, sometimes it just happened. And the other times you kind of feel... If I give an example, you know, many years ago when I was selling incense on the street, I finished um, teaching. I wasn't teaching anymore. I wanted just to experience a bit more freedom in my life and to move with more spontaneity and like this. And so I was used to that. So, and um, so I started selling incense in my town, actually. First, I tried to get away from my town because too many people knew me. And you just feel like, how can a teacher from college be selling incense on the street? And those kind of feeling that I had, you know. So I tried different places, Camden and and uh, Leicester Square, but and it was fine, but it wasn't. I felt like I'm hiding, you know. I didn't want to be seen a certain way or something, you know. But I like being at home. I liked my town, you know. So one day we just went out. I do I make my own bags as well to stitching with a little single machine and make these things thought for the day, some aphorisms which I'd write out. People would come and ask for a thought for the day or buy some incense, had a bell and things like this. And one day, it was coming up towards Christmas time and I was on the, just on the main road. In those days, I'm moving around quite a lot with my bell. And uh, so I had one incense burning and I was with my bell, clang, clang, incense, incense, you know, on the street like this. And, uh, one kind of elderly, you know, Jamaican man, you know, kind of came up. He was standing by for a little while. And he says, uh, why are you, uh, in a very strong voice, why are you uh, selling this, this stuff? Are you a devil worshiper or something like that? It was very strong. I mean, like, it wasn't, it was very clear, you know. Why, why are you selling this ringing bell on the street? Are you a devil worshiper, you know? And so immediately I felt like, Whoa, you know, to coming up. But by the time it got up to about the chest, it just kind of powdered out. <laughs> and I found different words coming out. I don't know what it was coming. And I said, you know, you know, why do you say this, uncle? You know, what are you saying? You know, I said, like, you know, why do you say, what, well, because of the bells? I said, but, you know, also, when you went to school, didn't you remember hearing a bell and things like this? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I said, it's coming Christmas, and you've seen Christmas cars with bells. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but what's this all this smell or smell or so devil worshiping and stuff? Very strong. You know? <laughs> I said, but you know, I said, I was trying to say, incense. He goes, incense, 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 nonsense. <laughs> I said, but you know, because I could see that he was something pushing some feeling that it was a religion that he didn't like or something. So I said to him, you know, um, at the birth of Jesus, you know, according to the Bible, no? there was what? Three wise men. He said, yeah, yes, yeah, three wise men. I said, you remember that they brought him some gifts and everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think it was, uh... I said, I said, some gold, gold, yeah. I said, what? Uh, we talked like this, you know, frankincense, it's incense. And myrrh, incense, you know? I said, yeah, I never thought about it like that. And, you know, I just said, yeah, it's incense. And this is also... Incense, you know? and then he he was yeah yes 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 he says okay wh what's that one you have burning there <laughs> and it was called love supreme he said we used to burn this kind of incense in 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 Brixton because a lot of Caribbean people they like this kind of very sweet smell you know baby powder and they like chewing gum so sort of smell you know but it was quite a nice one and so he said oh what's this one you're burning there it's still crusty you know. I said, this one, this one's called Love Supreme. And he goes, Love Supreme? <laughs> he said, so I said, smell it, smell it, come smell it. And that is for him. And I said, yeah, it's very nice, very nice. And how much you sell those things for? He said, well, they are a pound for a pocket, a pound? Yeah, I think I'll have one of them, you know, like this. And that's a conversation that really turned around, like in like three minutes, when something was being felt very strongly and expression was very, very heavy. And my response, you know, was coming just by itself, like, whoa, like, you know, who the hell are you talking to? I call him, you know, this type of thing. Mm -hmm. But it came out different, like, you know, because I know I grew up with sometimes people with this type of voice, you know, and I, I hear them from a distance, but it was very strong in the face. 
and I referred to him like, Humphrey, why do you say it like this? And took time to explain, and he could make those links. And in the end, he bought an incense, the most ridiculously, you know, miraculous thing <laughs> at all, considering the way he came, you know. I have been shown also different things I had not considered, you know. That, yeah, I mean, maybe the, the, the people who do this, they want to, some friction, because they work a lot with friction. And the mind works a lot with this type of, you know, try, when I say often that from the mind comes this, this, this invitation, in a way, to, to get entangled, to become personal. Because when you're personal, although you're consciousness, you're, you're in your weakest stage. If you, if you are pulled into personhood, then you get very defensive, start to explain like you're guilty and all these type of things. And I feel it's important to taste these in life, you know, although some very bitter tastes come. In a way, in one side, I feel I, I could, I've had enough of them, but at the same time, I'm grateful for them also. And why? Because I learned something. I, I, something was good. Some very good decisions came, came out of being attacked here. Yeah? They were saying that when life sends you chilies, you make chili con carne. They said, make chili con carne. <laughs> life sends you lemon, make lemonade and this kind of stuff. You can get too much of that kind of over encouragement, but it said something that, you know, make use, of, make use of it. There's a saying that a wise man builds a house out of the stones his enemies throw at him, you know. I like things like that because it's like turning something around from it being solely negative, you know, that you, 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 it is transformed by something. But it depends on what level, you know. Some people are very much dedicated to, uh, you know, creating poison, you know. They're not that concerned about the people who read their things. They don't have any love for them, for sure. But they can present things as though, you know, they are doing something for your benefit. But they get a joy out of um, hurting others. That's a reality. There are some people who, for a time at least, will be on that side of the fence. And what to do? You know? Should we use our discernment um, as a kind of, you know, sometimes? You discern, okay, this is just worldly talk and I'll stay out of it and I'll keep myself high minded. But yeah. yeah, sometimes it does feel appropriate to just. You have to be guided by your own inner GPS, you know, and that is your idea. You may call it your conscience or your, your spiritual sensitivity or something you, you sense, you know. And uh, I like to remind people, you know, to, 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 to really become more aware of themselves more as consciousness, more than as a you know, person. You know? And get, get accustomed to thinking as consciousness. Because when you do, you know, that, that, that kind of venom is not so stingy. You know? But um, from there, some guidance come as to what to do. Why a similar um, say, attack would be treated differently at a different time, and what will dictate or determine that, that difference in response, you know? Um, we can't say. I, I feel uh, it's a very intuitive thing, and I feel that it, here is another opportunity of really using your intuition, being with your intuition, and, and sensing, and sometimes being, being patient, and to know when it's, in, it's now being over patient or something, you know, there's a time to do things. And I feel it's all within our, you know, our sardonic life to, to be that alert, you know. There's time to say something, sometimes to say, like, you know, this is really enough, you know. It's clear that people who speak in this way do not have the, well, the interest and well-being of other, others, you know, on their mind. Mm. They, are, they get a joy out of corrupting and, you know, and uh, just distorting things, and, and they get a joy from that. And some people feel that, like, but something must be true. And sometimes nothing is true. It doesn't mean that because something is said means there must be a particle of truth. You know, they maybe get your name right or something. Or, you know, sometimes, sometimes it is like that. You know, and we there's a part of our culture I feel you know in the human world, and it depends also where, which polarity you live in the in the north or in the south. These things 
everything is somehow contributing to the way in which we experience things and what people have to say. In India, it's not so, it's a bit different, you know. They have a natural respect for spiritual teachers, even though seemingly a lot of times people have been let down or things, scandals have come and so on. But it's like it's in the Indian blood and the temperament of maybe the East to be much more um, trusting and uh, faithful and, you know, like this. And in other places, sometimes people are more skeptical, easy towards skepticism, easy to believing things that they simply read and think that that's sufficient a background that it comes in print as a sort of a stamp of authority and of truthfulness, you know. But it's all things we learn on the way. We all grow up, you know, and somehow, you know. And living a personal life is a very costly life, I have to say. Living life based upon on personhood, steeped in personhood, is a very strenuous life. You know? Sometimes people feel like they, they have to say everything as much as they feel to declare and not, not fall. But uh, maybe that, that may happen, but gradually you, you can meet people in a more natural way. That's what I've found, you know. That I don't have, I'm not going like I've got anything to teach you. I'm not going because I'm feeling compassion for you. We're just meeting up and, you know, then just how it comes out, it's always going to come out well. But if I don't have an angle like, you know, these guys, you know, you know I'm going to show you how to wake up and all this kind of stuff and things, then I think we do pretty good. You know, you just go and meet and I, I it's been such a great thing when you don't feel that you have a spiritual commission, you know, to go and change people or to, you know, rope them in or something, you know. And you just go and just relax, you know. But at the same time, you don't do too much to conceal that either. You just have to be yourself, you know. Uh, it's just, I don't know, you, you find your way. The greatest thing is if you don't have any desire, you know. And that's, that's not an easy one, because sometimes you think you don't. You understand? Or to, when I say, live as though you don't have any rights. And these are powerful things, because, you know, sometimes we're inclined to think, yeah, but I'm like that anyway. But then you start to see it creeping in. And just by hearing it, it wakes up that consciously within you, and then you start to reflect, like, wow, actually, I would have really fallen on that one, uh, you know, like this. So these things, I think, they stir us up. But not only, even if someone intend to hurt you, your intention is not to hurt them back. Your intention is just to keep, you know, somehow dissolving in this grace that you are discovering. No? Then something happens, you know, something. You, 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 you learn something, you feel a change, even if they really kick, kick you in the head or something. But somehow it's going to turn out to your advantage somehow. You know, and I don't think that that's fluffy reasoning. I, I've seen it, I've seen it. You see, um, but of course, you know, uh, we each, even in the sangha, you'll find some beings that you resonate with more, and you see each other more, and so it's per perfectly natural thing. But. Um, I, I feel we, we naturally are drawn to those whose company brings us joy or something. You know? We enjoy that, that type of energy field, and not so much people who are going to be on your case. You know? Although you may say, well, they may be bring you more opportunities, but you wouldn't really pick them on your team. You know? But if we are really open to, uh, to it, and it's not pleasant, you know, it's some bitter aloes there, but... Hi, Jim. You know, it seems like some people are really... They're drawn to the negative also. Like, there are some... Yes. Like, what is it in some, in some cases where they're really drawn to this... Kind of this small, gossipy, judging, looking for the I, worst? I don't know. Sometimes it seems that, you know, some people get a kind of lift out of it, you know? It makes them feel better that someone is doing so bad. And sometimes they say, wow, you know, like, dear, but for the grace of God, go I. They say that, you know, to someone who may be spiritually much more advanced than them. But they maybe look on you and think, you know, you're poor, Lord. you know, I mean, you were going somewhere five years ago, and look at you, you know. 
and there are some beings who are not happy for your happiness. You know, and we just have to accept that it's like this. As I said before, there has never been a being who has been loved by everybody. You know, not even God. You know, so there's something when it manifests into the into the the functioning of duality and diversity and so on. We're going to get this. What I've learned from it myself is that this is not my home <laughs> completely in that kind of way. The earth, the world, the the the, the matrix of you know human projection and and you know the level of that our consciousness is functioning at a, on a human scale. You know, I, I having come to see more of that. You know, the aspirations that used to you know be something. You know, they have just really faded away. I tell you, you know, and uh, that doesn't mean you give up. It means that you know somehow you give up some things which you discover are not in service to the truth, although it may have been a fantasy for a while. You know. You know, a little while ago, Guruji had this insight that you know, at night when we're sleeping, we're dreaming, and we call it dream. But then the same mechanism that produces the dreams in the daytime seems to produce the thoughts. And I had this real flash of like, wow, this is the, the dream that we talk about, the maya, like it's living in these thoughts and projections. And one thing that I... Because you talked about that we learn things from all of these things we're exposed to. And something that I've really seen is that People have many projections about everyone else, but particularly if someone is a spiritual teacher or a spiritual master, then yeah. there's all these uh, projections that happen, and perhaps they see things and they interpret them in a way that is completely off the. Th there is a, a seemingly, you know, a stronger inclination towards negativity mm. uh, displayed in much of our Western thinking, also. Mm. You know, a tendency to look for maybe it's just. An overactive appetite that's been developed in our society for for negative news, you know, mm -hmm. and for tearing people down or something like this. It's it's like a kind of like a culture to do that, you know. And he who feels it knows it. They say, you know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you you know, we feel things and then we have not learned sufficiently, and then we end up so doing the same things mm -hmm. with other beings, you know. But it's true that there are people who they enjoy. To do evil, but I say it's evil, meaning to to hurt someone who you don't even know, and to make up lies. I mean, they don't have those principles, those kind that kind of conscience hasn't really shaped inside them, and they perhaps really believe they really start to believe in their own delusions also. They 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 really believe that you know they are crusaders for truth. You know, it can be like this. You know what to do. Um, even in the days of Sri Ramana Maharshi, I remember some story like this that, you know, someone was really against him. You know, we think, oh, anybody be against Ramana? Well, there's some. You know, in every age, you know, you could be as, you can be as as placid as a goldfish. Somebody's going to be off after your nuts. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, I mean, someone can just be. You think, well, what, why, why? I said, no, no, I feel that it's good that sometimes, you know, you, I notice, uh, talking of goldfishes, you know, how they would be, and they, even these, the Brazilian ones that kind of swim like this, you know, and very, very slow and fat, you know, kind of thing, you know, and then the other ones which are very fast. And when we put them all together, the, the, the slow ones, they start to move more quickly. They start to start to bend, go for the food and flash around and this kind of behavior. I thought, wow, that's not like you. You know, but they were behaving like that. They pick up, we pick up behavior, you know, until you really begin to experience for yourself. I mean, most of what we we think we know are just grafted on in some kind of way. As you begin to make real discovery of the self, you know, you start to see the the inadequacies of the of the personal way of of uh, functioning, you know. And uh, that's when I, I think most people start to feel the real battle, you know, of um, you know those forces that. Uh, anyway, I still see that they are really against the person, because they cannot be against the higher state of consciousness. You see, they just all the sails, all the wind has gone out the sails there. 
but in the person. So I don't see them to be so totally, they spur the person in a way to, to move on to safer places. And the safe place is to, is, to, is to sort of like, if I can use the word, to come back to your formlessness in some way. And at first it may seem just to escape the world of form, become so heavy. But also you find that, you know, uh, you know don't, don't let the, this realization of the self be like some kind of, you know, air raid shelter or something, you know. So that as soon as trouble passes, you can kind of look and see if it's okay to come out. And because when it happens, you start to actually see, wait a second, no, but this is the place. I want to stay here, not to escape. It's like my mind was thinking to escape, but now I see actually it's to, it's to grow and to see, you know. I mean, how could we ever come to the end of this subject? Because it functions in such a diverse way, according to the, the very unique, strands and waves and frequency, you know, of, of consciousness in its dances, you know, this kind of manifest manifestation on this level. And on this level will mean diff differently for different beings also. If it's on the level of, the, of personality, you know, the frequencies are very, very agitated easily. If they are more in the frequency of presence, they are more soft and more, more, there's more panorama in them. And from the place of the higher than this one, it's, it's very, very different. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, because that is, then all that appears to be can be seen. There, 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 there have always been and will always be, you know, beings who have a genuine approach and integrity for the truth. You know, there will always be beings who don't. But sometimes it can be like there can be a plague for a while, but everything is for a while. Where something gets really, really, you know, it, it goes to a full thing. That that bubble bursts and then something some relief, some st some stability come for a bit. And the wave may rise up in another place. Um, I would advise people in Satsang to, to be natural in their way, speak up for themselves. But don't get overly entangled in, in, in this type of energy, because uh, it's very, very dark. I don't know how people keep it up. You know? It is very, very dark. And I suppose if you like something, even though it's dark, then you must, there is an energy in there for you. you know? um, I would always encourage people to avoid that. In Sahaja also, I was talking some years ago like this. You know, please don't um, don't give too much space to people who gossip. You know, it's not a good um, habit, and it really brings down the, the 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 vibration, good vibration of the community. And the people who do this, they don't respect you. Also, they're quite happy to pull you into some some mess. You see, they're not your friends, you know. And generally, you know, aim for the higher, the higher thing, you know, as much as you can. And biggest of all is to not let your heart develop, you know, nasty feelings about anybody. Because sometimes when someone do something, you know, it depends upon the strength of it, the impact it has on you. It will reflect in, you know, what you want your response to be. And I can see all manner of strong dark things coming out when we feel hurt you know it's amazing it's the ego that feels hurt when the ego is hurt it does the most atrocious things it can be spiteful resentful just full of dark things it's amazing this play of consciousness because it's not the body doing it you know the body is perhaps the instrument through which it's expressed but it's not the doer of it and I cannot say that the God Self purely delights in that. It must be seen from a higher perspective. To say you should not feel hurt, you know, is a difficult one, because there are some people who can hear that and just throw off hurt. And others will tell you, no, no, you know, it's it's okay to feel hurt, but don't get stuck in that. You know, allow that emotion to happen or that response to happen, but don't turn it into into some war or something. Just, you know, 
use that. You know, it it creates a fire in you, and and just offer all of that righteousness or something. Guruji, this this discussion has been interesting because it, we're speaking about <clears throat> people who um, come under attack themselves, or you know, some mm. malicious thing directed towards them, or when they're seeing that happen to a loved one. But you know, actually, so much of this goes on even inside our own selves. You know. Yes. And what's beautiful about a master like you is that. Uh, in your natural way, you show us that so many expressions are natural and okay, and it breaks down beliefs in ourselves about what life is supposed to look like in the awakened state. And I just yes. felt to say that. You know, that's a good point, and I'm, I'm always happy to, to, to become involved in that, because I see sometimes we beat ourselves up about how we should be, you know, a lot. And, um, and it causes suppression. Which I don't too much like the sound of. I prefer control, because you can control something. You still have a power there, but if you're suppressing it, there's some shadow there. You're hiding something, and it's going to come up somewhere else. You know. So um, yeah, even if there was no external enemy of such in our own minds, that's why I say that you could be even on a desert or live on a small island, and you will still have to overcome your own thinking. You know. Some crab is going to come and really annoy you, and you're going to do something really, really bad, or whatever it is, or you know, you're going to start taking a mosquito bite personally, and you know, and, you know, whatever it is, and it draws out the stuff inside. It's going to come, and I feel, you know, it, we should use this rather than complain about it. Complain is one of the weakest responses we could do. You can say, yeah, it really hurts and whatever, but if you dwell and you know, you put your posi- yourself in the position of a victim or something. Then it it is you have not used it really well, you know. I want to talk about the good, the bad has done to me, for me. Uh, because some things came, uh, which I was not looking at them. This is for years and years now, you know. And they came and they felt like a sword, you know, in your side, you know. But they compelled me to to move and to to change some things inside. And I saw how. You know how much it was needed, also, but I couldn't say thank you for it. You understand? Because too much the sense of the door of them was inside me. I'm not looking at it as an experience of consciousness from consciousness, but more personal. If you look at the personal, you get personal, and it's very difficult then to take the full juice out because you still feel like I still want you to pay for that now, you know, for hurting me. You say, but look what you came out with, and this is why. I enjoy to ask people when they speak about bad experiences and so on. You know, did did you get anything good out of it? Can you see anything good happened out of it? And sometimes they have to stop and really try to search. And and there's a lot of abundance in the, in in it, but they were not looking. And if you're not conscious of it, then you don't experience it. But then coming back again, this consciousness thing again. I said, well, you're gonna play. You know, consciousness is a liar. <laughs> You know, in the play, it is. You know, in that, in the, in this dynamic thing. You know, you cannot just say it is only good. No, it can be really bad too. In that, you have to go above this also, the consciousness mind and the consciousness that manifests as the world and all this dynamic and varied expressions of being and conflicts and stuff. It's doing all of that. I don't trust it. You see, you have to go above that where you are the witness of that activity also. And know that it is necessary for what is changeful to continue being changeful, and not search for the for the absolute in the realm of the changeful. At least that thing you come, you see. And at a certain point, uh, something you know, because it's there already. It's not like you say, oh, you reach there by flying. You you come into that space. You follow the right guidance, and you follow you know like. Uh, you follow the master's guidance, and it brings you there, or grace opens this way for you, and you experience it. You see, this is what uh, I'm for that, and I don't have to travel one single place. I don't feel if I, you know, I, I only ever, I've only ever travelled um, at the end of an invitation. Somebody invite me to go someplace. But I'm quite happy to to just be in my yard. In the West, you know, we 
have a lot of stories of you know failed gurus and people who exploit each other and all this type of stuff, you know, and that gets popular and big attention from a lot of places and people. You know? And uh, even the word guru, I start to almost become a taboo. It's like some kind of it represents some charlatan or something like this, you know. So that's the kind of climate um, that we live in. Uh, people have very short attention spans. They're very quick. Uh, we're accustomed, especially with the rising of internet and so on, and everyone can have a voice and and us also have a voice and not to be seen and so on. Like that. It's very very powerful in in the in the minds of many people, you know, to cast you know dispersions and to cast judgments and so on. Away. So it's it's a very volatile um, sort of environment, you know. And uh, again. You may find a teacher who, who is very soft and kind and doesn't provoke too deep feelings. And it seems people they, they feel a certain comfort with that, like someone who doesn't challenge you too deeply. They like somebody to give you enough challenge to make it entertaining for you. So you say, OK, now you get, they introduce a practice, you must do a bit of something. So some people, they are more happy with that. you know. Um, <clears throat> and there are other teachers who are just you know, fire and brimstone. Basically, it was like you know they're calling you know, to account this day, and you know you're going to go to hell. And blah, blah, blah. I grew up with some of that environment also, you know, so I know how that can feel. And you know, you literally feel like you know it's today or never, basically. You know, and the gates are closing, and you really just get your ass, you know, whatever, you know. So there's a lot of different ways that people um, approach spirituality and. It's not so common in the West, this whole thing about uh, guru, master. You know, it's still looked upon with sus- uh, suspicion. There were a lot of stories of you know beings who seem to, uh, have to many people at one time, to be called an enlightened being, and then you know they do something, and they were, oh my God, how could they do this? And it's so terrible, um, because. Either the beings say that you know I'm not human, I'm God. You know, if you do that, it's a big setup. You better be God because if you are not, you are going to have a mighty fall, basically. You know, um, uh, those who don't, you know, um, and keep their teachings in more in the. Uh, keep the teachings more in the umbrella of, say, philosophy, or some may call it, you know, of pure thought or something, or you know, sort of like some other kind, some other mode of expression that doesn't excite people, you know, like this, and seems much more often more mental and scientifically, you know, appealing and this type of stuff. It seems to attract some beings. But God made a lot of different beings, and made some who are just really in love. If they meet something, some happens inside their heart, an explosion of some nature, and they fall in love. They may at first have even considered themselves to be unlovable. They may be atheists, whatever it is. But if that happens, that one of God's atom bombs happens inside you, you pretty much have not much choice. You know, you're going to get, you know, you're going to be flapping about for a bit. And uh, such beings, they, they, they come into it in a very different way. And they, it's, others are inclined to, to regard such beings as being very weak. Like they give up so much their, their kind of autonomy and their sense of responsibility, and they have this kind of negative uh, um, attitude towards them. Um, and the ones who, who are being unjustly treated in that way are oftentimes much too nice to come fight back with you. They're so much in love, they, can't even, they don't even hear these things. You know? But as for like, uh, if you're in the role of a teacher or something like that, and uh, uh, it depends what the supreme intends to manifest through a particular form. If anyone really genuinely is aspiring for truth, you have to be cured of the of the the ego mind, the identity with the ego. You know, whatever your path, whether it is a, a, a scientific path or an emotional, or if it's a devotional path, or if it's a sort of you know, wisdom-oriented path, or if it's to do with karma yogi and it's an action path, whatever you have to transcend the ego 
identity. So all the different parts are just what God created uh, to align, you know, those with the temperament in the right place, to express themselves in whichever way. But it's just a way to overcome your ego, and to give up this lowly identity of personhood, and to uh, wake up to the truth of your divine origin. You know, and and for me that that is a fact. A fact seen enough times. What is so beautiful is that by grace, it is not made to be difficult anymore. You know, if your heart and mind is open, and uh, you know you can begin to to taste the, the nectar of of the self or of God. You know, don't think yourself to be anything above or below. And uh, I think you'll be in good stead. There are always things I like to tell people: watch out for this, mind out for this. You know, because sometimes, upon uh, some initial realization or some awakening happens for them, and immediately the ego is launched. And that's the worst thing. I've seen them slipping right down. You know, and they're sometimes not aware of it. You know, but. Um, yeah, we have to be cured. I'm, I'm happy you brought by that term. I say that people have to be cured of of that way. Because for for myself, it is so obvious when we are speaking from the place of personhood. You know, it is so obvious when it's coming from that place of uh, personhood and uh, and uh, selfishness, and it's not pure. You, know, you can tell so quickly, and so should anybody who has been here for some time. You know that you practice that, but you just come to know. It's just like, it's just like knowing by smell something that's going to be sweet and something that's going to be sort of like peppery or something. You just know from experience. You know it. So um, that's one of the things I would say to people: be wary of and to be cured of this this egoic identity, because with it you will not be free. Can say that. As long as there is ego, another way of ego, you can call ego also arrogance. You know, and um, it can be mild-looking arrogance or a very hostile kind of arrogance, but in any in other <coughs> way, it blights your sight. You know, and really makes it impossible. You know. So, yeah. The person has to be cured, and you know. Until then, it's like I I don't want to feel that I too much have to be answerable to the world. You know, according to you know, I've always got to live up to their measurement, and and the projections about what what you should be like. You know, this is what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and you shouldn't touch this, you shouldn't touch that, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't eat this, you shouldn't dress like that. You know, you shouldn't be saying this word or something like that. You know, like you know. They want a, a designer saint or a guru, like, you know, and then if you do this, we'll follow you. Well, I'm really saying to the world, I'm not looking for any followers. I really am not. For the most part, they've been troubled also. You know, it's not looking for followers. I am for beings who, you know, they're on their own path. If they're searching for something, if they meet me, they are going to experience love, you know, and, and fairness. And if they're open, I'll put down what I'm doing to guide them if they have a space for that, you know. But I don't want I'm not calling anybody, oh you must be with me. Oh you no, I don't want to. I've heard of some places where the the the, the activity of an ashram or a, a, a sort of like a temple or something is to try and get as many people to come, you know. And that's not my problem. I don't have that problem. I don't want to have I mean I'd rather just not have that many people coming. But if they come I feel compelled to serve them for some reason. Maybe that's what it is, you know. And um, and not with a heavy heart. I mean, to to do that, it's just becoming increasingly um, sometimes kind of demanding in some way. And um, I'm also enjoying life, you know, marvelously. In all of its myriad expressions, you know, it's just somehow 
it is just how it seems to be flowing, you know, it's just in this continuous state of bliss, you know. But that's been for so long, you know, that it, it's, it's just kind of, I don't want to say it were ordinary because I don't have the ordinary meaning of ordinary, you know. For me, <laughs> kind of ordinary means really, really, really good. You know? <laughs> Oh, no, it's really, really good. And, you know, mm. also, I'm learning more and more that, you know, to, to not even feel that people uh, are responsible for hating you or loving you. I don't know where that comes from. But. You know, when I, um, I returned from India, one month, before Papaji left the body. And just in the same week, I think uh, Lady Diana from England, she passed away, and Mother Teresa passed away, some other one or something. And uh, he went back to London. And uh, I remember reflecting on something that happened with Diana, you know, because she seemed not to have been happy in her marriage to the prince or whatever. But uh, it, it was, it was a, a big thing that was announced, that she was going to open her heart to the world or to the, to the British people, and just expressed you know, herself. Big interview, you know, really good interviewer as well, too, kind of quite a compassionate guy, and talked. And she talked about her feelings, nothing, nothing extravagant, you know, just she was very, very protective still. I think. But at the end of her talk, immediately there were panels already of people are already in position. I mean, in, in position not to do what? You know? She just finished talking and said, all right, we're going over to the BBC now. We have this panel of people from so and so and so and so and so. And people are going to be talking, you know, oh, no, you know, that's the last thing she should have done. Oh, it made her look like this. Another one said this. And, that, uh, and of all the wealth and uh, the diversity of different opinions, people, yes, no, we love her, we hate her. Uh, I remember one thing that was said by one lady, just on the street, who asked, you know, so what do you make of all of this, madam? And some lady, middle aged lady, says, well, all I can say is those who hate her will hate her more, and those who love her will love her more. I said, that's life. You know, the people who love you, they will love you more for your honesty. The people who hate you will hate you more. It's like you know, pfft, you'll always find something like this. And um, the really important thing is not to get too far down with that. Feel the things a bit, work with it. What is showing you? Because this is some acid grace, you know. And you have to be with it, you know, and really full, and feel the things that are coming up, and sort of like you know, let them burn off consciously, you know. Let them burn off consciously, because it's going to take you to another place, a higher place. You know, somebody used to say, "Oh, yeah, because he loves people." And uh, some things, I love people. No, it's not. I just love people. I love the God in people. That's why I love. I want to see the God in you more. You see, because who you are chosen to be who you are, don't interest me. But when I see the, the God light in you, I'm just naturally attracted to that. And I just love to be with beings like this. Lovers of the truth, and that way, you don't want to. You just sleep, just feel like a waste of time. You just have so much fun, you know, just, just, just by just being with being, you know. It's so lovely. And I wish all these people who, who find it in their hearts to be cursing others and stuff would just Come and have a hug, man, and just sit down and just relax yourself, you know, take your foot off this, you know, the devil's shuttle. You know, and just enjoy a little bit of how life can be. This is why we love you. This yeah, is why everyone true. like that comes into yeah. into the hearing of your teachings love you because it's you're not like far away and unreachable, you know, mm. like you're on the ground, you're with us, you've lived life, you you can you know, we can share with you and you you hear us in a way that's like it's. Well, one thing happened some somewhere. I don't know how it happened, but I just discovered I was unshockable actually. You know what I mean? And 
<laughs> and because I've just seen and heard some things, I think I said, well, okay, you can better that. I'm not waiting around. It's not a competition. But, you know, I, 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 you know, I mean, and some people might perceive that they really need to protect me from, from some things. <laughs> so that's just lollipops right there, what you're talking about. And as I've seen, I'm not naive, you know, like this. And, you know, so that's, that's there. And I know that, uh, you know, people say things, they don't realize what they're saying. They don't realize it because there may come a time when you really, if you don't realize it before you drop your body, there may come a time and you really see, you know, really what you what you said and if and how unloving a place that came from, and such shame will come to you, you know. So I pray that they 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 get corrected early, you know, because it's not good. It's not good. But at the same time, I feel everything is good somehow. But I don't, you know, I don't trust that entirely. That everything is good. That everything can be turned off for some good. But some things I have a bit of a difficulty to to hold that saying completely. And um, yeah, I feel God has revealed. This very simple way, and is very, very much in it. When I say God, I don't relate to God as a person. You know, it's like uh, just supreme divine intelligence, spirit that uh, that just emanates this perfume of tremendous peace and love. And I don't want to encapsulate because it's not you can never encapsulate, you see. But you know, um, that's the that's the and to break the the biggest uh, illusion and delusion that you can be outside of God talking about God. And all this talk is arranged inside. And depends on who you take your yourself to be and where you you choose or you're capable of putting the emphasis on what's important for you, you know. But uh, but that this love I came, and this 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 pointer is, is so simple. This has been a great, 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 great uh, thing that something could come that is very simple. Don't have to make no fuss. Fine, I can leave it. I can leave it. You know, say make use of it. You know. That is a master key. It will serve you very well. Make use of it. Boom! Nothing else. No, nothing. <laughs> that feels very good. We must not be naive, though. No. It just doesn't work like that, you see. And on the human platform. That you know, you can say yes somewhere. Everybody's searching for happiness, you know, but perceiving it in so many different ways, you know, and it can be such that you know, different groups of people searching for hap- one happiness, fighting against each other, you know, and because because of that, and I feel it's really good to know that all of that exists in the bubble of that consciousness, that what you may call the waking state consciousness. All the sins and the and the, you know the transcendences happen in that realm. You know, and uh, and when will it be seen as a dream? And what is meant by dream? You know, because people need to really um, have these things explained. Why is a dream? So why, how can you say that this is a dream? How can you say that this is a dream? On what level, you know? Because in dreams, unusual things shift about, and you, sometimes you're flying, or sometimes you said, "No, no, dream in the sense that the mind is always interpreting based upon its conditioning and the strength of its identity, you know, with the form and you know, like this. And because of this, you know, we all have a different view of the one Earth." 
we've made our own private world out of it. I say world because it's much more of a psychological phenomenon, you know. The way we think about it, our joys and sorrows, you know, are largely shaped within inside ourselves. They're not just outside, and they're the way that it is perceived inside. And who you take yourself to be based upon your experiences and the way that your conditioning makes it possible for you to experience in a certain way. You know? If we understood this, you know, I feel that human beings would be much more kind to each other. You know? But it's the belief in personhood which I feel is at the source and the, and the root of all the sorrow in the world. It's this thing, the thing that you must overcome in order to experience what we call liberation, or a spiritual awakening, or self-realization, or moksha, or whatever name, salvation you want to call it, you know. It's just it's just this. And you know, the food of that liberation is served by the same chef in different ways to suit the different, you know, taste temperaments and of of each being. Most exquisite. I mean, to even try and figure these things out is a kind of, you know, your your legs buckle because you come up against your own arrogance to even think you can do that. But you can begin to experience some harmony with that, which is not based on concepts, because in our human world we so much venerate concepts as though it's the it's our main means of communication. But it just depends, you know, it's the mainstream way. But those who are more sensitive, they have different ways of, of uh, you know, communicating. Body language, your energy, you know, your energy collection, you know, the way that you, you know, the way that you speak, you know, your your ability to look and look someone in the eyes and speak. All these different things, they they just know it intuitively, you know, and communicate. They can be in silence with people. They can recognize when silence is more powerful than anything you can say. And they can honor that in so many different ways that the beings they uh, were interacting, you see. Very good.